Hey guys, it's Cody with Taking 20 and welcome back to my Roll20 Master Series. In today's video, I'm going to teach you guys a cool little trick that I like to call stacking macros. So I hope you guys are ready. Let's get started. Okay, so first let me show you guys exactly what I mean when I use the term stacking macros and then we'll get into how to do it and at the end of the video I'll tease something pretty cool that I think you guys will like so what do I mean by stacking macros at the bottom of my bar here you'll notice I have this macro called dice let me show you what it does with one click I can pull up a separate box filled with additional macros that I can use instantaneously so I have set up several macros in my game that roll two of any certain type of dice. So 2d20, 2d10, etc. You'll notice that this actually is a clickable box here that I can use right from the actual chat window. Everything is whispered, it's quick, it's clean, and I can get to roll a dice very quickly. So uh, and again, I like this system much better than trying to go, okay, I want to roll 1d10, uh, roll that, oh, but that didn't whisper, so I just, I didn't like that system, so uh, this is what I ended up with. Now, the reason that stacking macros is important is because instead of having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 additional macros all down here at the bottom, taking up all the space at the bottom of my bar and kind of cluttering up what I'm looking at, I can do this with just one simple macro dice 2d10 just like that okay so now that you guys know what I mean when I say stacking macros let me show you guys how to do it the first thing you'll need to do is actually set up some macros now what I'm showing you here is the actual macro I've created to roll 2d12s it looks really long because I've got it in this nice 5e template uh, and that's actually what these are it's in this nice 5e template it whispers all that jazz so, before we move on, I want you to consider that there are two types of macros that I'm talking about here. The first is the plain macro. It's whatever macro you guys have created, whether that's monster initiative macros, or dice macros, or perception check macros, anything like that that you've created. Those are just macros, plain macros. This right here, or in this little button labeled dice, is the what I'm going to dub for this video wrapper macro or the wrapping macro like a candy wrapper it has taken all these other macros and clumped them up together and presented them in a nice organized manner okay now that we have that out of the way let's look at the macros so this is the d12 macro all it does is basically roll 2d12 got it now let's look at how to stack that macro into another one so let's go up here and add a new macro and let's call this test dice and then down here we're gonna take this little formula and we're gonna paste it over here okay so when we're looking at this this first box inside the brackets is gonna be whatever actually appears inside of the pink clickable box so for this video let's go ahead and call this some dice now everything here I want you to leave alone and then after this hashtag this pound sign that right there is going to be the actual macro that when somebody clicks on this box that it's going to execute so our macro was called d12 so let's go ahead and put that here alright so looking at this macro what it should do is it should produce a pink box that has the words some dice inside I should be able to click it and when I do it should execute my d12 macro let's test it well that looks good so far let's see if it actually works and indeed it does great now that we understand how to call a macro let's figure out how we can master this we're masters of roll 20 we're going to clean this up and make it more presentable. So how can we do that? Let's go over here and for this video, 
I'm going to show you guys how to do this in the default template. So if you're playing Pathfinder, Star Wars, 3.5, 4th edition, 5th edition, no, it doesn't matter. Any, whatever game you're playing, this template will in fact work for your game. So this is the default template. Template Again, it'll be down below in the description. Now, whatever we put after this name is going to be what pops up in our purple box. So let's put dice there. And then let's kind of show you what this looks like. Okay, so, and then it has the word text. Let's change that over to dice also. And then everything after this equal sign is going to be, that's where we're going to place our actual macros. So again, let's go over here and paste our little formula in. And now let's call this D10. And the actual macro name, let's call D10. Again, I actually had to go in and create these macros. So I'm not just putting in D10. I, I have a whole macro that rolls to D10. Now let's test this macro out. Starting to look much better. So we've got this kind of nice little format here that's easy on the eyes as a DM to use. Now, what we need to do is whisper it. So let's go in and whisper this bad boy. And then let's go ahead, now that we know that this works, and let's copy this and go ahead and add a few more. So let's do the D12. And then let's do the dice query which is D question mark question mark D question mark question mark and let's test this macro looks very good it's whispered it it's in a nice clean format for us to see we've got several boxes of dice here the D10 works the D12 macro works and then finally the dice query if I want to roll six enter D6 enter looks like that works as well Great. So now you guys know how to stack or nest a macro. So let's talk about some of the ways that we can use this. I'm going to go over this probably in the next video, maybe a couple videos down the road, but I want to show you what this is capable of to get the creative juices flowing for you guys so that hopefully you guys can show me a couple of cool macros you've created. You'll notice I have some more macros down here at the bottom. Let me show you this, guys. You'll like this. So let's say I'm, I'm running a game and I need to come up with an NPC on the fly. No problem. I can click this creating NPC and I can pull up an appearance. Oh, my NPC is missing teeth. He is, uh, his intelligence is he's kind of dim-witted and slow and he is prone to predictions of doom. Sounds like a homeless guy on the streets. But that is how powerful this system can be when you learn how to stack macros that you can actually start building in your own generators and rollable tables to make your games run smoother everything in the master series guys is about making your games go smoother and faster without taking away the creative process that happens at the table so i hope you guys enjoyed this video as always, if it's your first time here and you love role-playing games as much as I do, I'd love to have you subscribe. I'll be putting out new videos on more Roll20 tutorials. I'll be covering player tips, DM tips, all kinds of stuff. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. If you have any questions, please hit me up on Twitter at TakingD20 and all that social stuff like Facebook and Google Plus and all that's down below. So you can check that out in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cody, and may your games be filled with awesome memories and even better friends. I'll catch you guys next time. One, two, three. You didn't know you were going to say it. Thanks for watching. Okay, buddy. All right, kiddo. I love you.